Hi, my name is Tim Westcott. I'm the owner of Westcott Design Services, and I've been designing control systems mostly to run on embedded processors for the last 20 or 25 years, and for much of that time I have been teaching control systems as well. Now today we're going to talk about PID controllers. Before I talk about the controller, however, I want to talk about the device that I'm going to use to uh, show you how the controller works. This fan trainer gives us a nice visual presentation of how this thing works. And let me just jump right in and give you a demonstration. If I turn this thing on, you see the fan trainer is controlling this arm to be perfectly vertical. Now, it's, it's actively controlling it too. If I, if I push the arm off of the target and I let go, then it controls it back to being vertical. And I can pull it the other way. And again, it controls the arm until it's vertical. I can also change the target position. and it will drive the arm to that position. And that's all I want to show you about this for right now. Okay, now before I go on to talking about the PID controller itself, I want to show you what a disturbance is. Now, one of the important jobs of a controller is to reject disturbances. Um, this fan trainer gives us a way to easily add a disturbance. Now, when I talk about a disturbance, what I mean is some effect that's affecting my overall system that makes it want to not be where it's supposed to be. So in this case, if there's something that pushes on that arm, then if the controller were active, the controller would push it right back where it belongs because the controller is rejecting a disturbance. And other than me bumping the thing, we have a very easy way to add a disturbance to that, and that is that I have a nice handy weight. So I want to show you what it does when I put this weight on here, because the next thing I'm going to demonstrate, it's going to be important to know how fast this thing drops with, it, with the weight on it, and then we'll, and no control. It's important to see how fast this thing drops when there's no controller active and with the weight on it, and then later on you'll see the controller trying to deal with this disturbance. There's my weight, and I'm going to drop this thing. Okay, so it drops pretty quick. Here, I'll do that again. Now I'll take my weight off. Get that out of the way. And we'll move on. We're talking about a PID controller. The PID controller works on the error between the output of the, the target output of the system and the desired output of the system. So if we wanted if we want that arm to be perfectly vertical and the arm's actually over here, then we would say that there's an error of 45 degrees. And hopefully the controller is going to work to reduce that error to zero. In a PID controller, there's three elements of the controller. And each one of those acts on the error. Each one of those looks at the error, it computes an output, and then the output of each of those three things are summed together to create the drive to the motor. In this presentation, we will first show derivative action, and then we will show the action of the proportional controller along with the derivative controller. And then we'll finally show the full PID action, proportional, integral, and derivative. So, let me show you derivative action or derivative control. Now the output of the derivative element is some gain times the derivative of the error. And if you don't know calculus, then derivative, what the heck's that? Okay, the derivative in this case is basically how fast the error is moving or how fast the arm is moving. So if the arm is moving slowly and the target point is the same thing all the time, then the derivative of the error is low. If the arm is moving quickly, then the derivative is high. Now, I'm going to turn off the integrator action. I 
and I'm going to turn off proportional action. And then I'm going to turn the controller on. Now remember, before I turned the controller on, and this thing immediately adjusted itself. And see, now it just kind of blipped, and it's still off target. But if I move this, watch the fan as I move this. Well, first I'll move it slowly. And you can see that the fan is driving a little bit. If I move it fast, you can see and hopefully hear that the fan is moving quickly. So the faster the arm is moving with derivative control, the more that the controller pushes back. Now let's put our let's put our disturbance weight on that and let's see how fast it drops. So we've got our weight on there and I'm going to let it drop. Now what's happening here is the derivative controller is trying as hard as it can to make the error zero, but the only thing the derivative controller can act on is how fast the arm is moving. It doesn't know, essentially it doesn't know where the arm is in absolute space, it only knows how fast it's moving. So it can only do so much. Now we'll turn that off. Now, that's derivative control. Now, let me show you proportional control. Because of the way the controller on this device is designed, I can't really show you purely proportional control. I have to show you proportional in conjunction with derivative. But I'll move things slowly, and hopefully it'll be obvious what's proportional. The output of a proportional control element is just the actual error itself times some gain. So we take the error itself, we multiply it by a number, and that's the output of the proportional controller. I'm going to turn the proportional controller back on. And I'm going to turn the control on. Okay, now we see that it, it's actually correcting itself. I'll pull this off target and let it go and we'll see. So it it puts itself back on target. Now the thing to notice about proportional control, with derivative control, it only pushed based on how fast the arm is moving. With proportional control, it should push based on how far away the arm is from the target. So I'm going to move it in little steps away from the target, and I want you to watch and listen for the fan. See, I move it a little bit, and it pushes a little bit. I move it a little bit more and it's pushing harder. You can hear it, it's pulsing because my hands aren't perfectly steady. I move it a long ways, and now it's just pushing as hard as it possibly can. It goes back to target. Now let me change the target here. Now notice that the thing servos nicely at 45 degrees, but remember that when we didn't have any power on at all, this thing would settle out at 45 degrees very happily. So let's put our disturbance on. Now note the angle of the arm. Put my disturbance weight on there. Okay, now I've got my disturbance weight. And I let go. And now this thing didn't fall all the way. But you see, it's not at the target angle anymore. It has to actually have some error in there in order to develop the drive. And you see how that bounced back. And that's a, that's a downside of proportional control. I'll turn that off again. Okay, now we're going to combine the proportional derivative control, which is what we just had, and we're going to add in integral action. Now, integrator elements are kind of hard to explain, but the integral element is some gain times the integral of the error. And again, integral is a calculus term. 
Um, if you don't know calculus, you can think of the integral as, as essentially a running sum of the error, um, which basically means if the error is slight, then the integrator value will slowly climb or slowly descend. If the error is great, then the integrator value will rapidly climb or rapidly descend. So, I'm going to turn the integrator back on. And we'll turn the control on. And it, it servos to straight up and down. Now I'm going to move this a hair off of the target. And I want you to notice how the fan speed evolves over time. So I move this very slightly off target. And you hear how the fan starts out slowly and then it gets more and more and more. That's the integrator value climbing. And it's actually climbed as high as it's going to go here. This is as much as the integrator can put out. And then I let it go and it can go back. Now, the, the, there, there's actually a downside to the integrator that you can see here, which is if I, let it, if I let the integrator get some value to it and let it go, you'll see that it actually overshoots. see it overshoots and then it comes back. That's the downside to the integrator. But the nice thing about the integrator comes when we see how it responds to a constant disturbance. So I'm going to move this down to 45 degrees. And I'm going to put on my weight. And we'll watch what happens. Now note the angle of this is exactly 45 degrees. Put my weight on here. This is going to get loud. I let it go. It falls down, but then it pushes back to just at 45 degrees. So the integrator is adding that extra action where the proportional, it had to have some error in order to be able to, to keep pushing with the integrator. It figures out that the error has been down and it keeps pushing until the error is zero. Now the other nice thing is, when I take this weight off, which would be, you know, what would happen if the disturbance is removed in real life, you'll see that the thing will still settle down to 45 degrees. Watch. There, and it settles out at 45 degrees, and there's almost, and there's no motion of the fan. Sometimes this thing moves a little bit because it, when the fan is moving slowly, it really doesn't push very hard. We'll move that back to vertical. Turn it off so things are quiet. So those are the three elements in a PID controller. And basically, that's kind of how a PID controller works. You'll find PID controllers all over in industry. You find them in various devices, medical devices, and, and um, they're in airplanes, they're in your car. A PID controller is more or less how cruise control works. So PID controllers are all over. If you write embedded software, and you need to embed a PID controller in your work, then you might be interested in my paper, PID Without a PhD. The link is right here. You can click on that, you can go to my paper and read it and see what you think. Also, if you want to go beyond what that paper covers, then you might be interested in my book, Applied Control Theory for Embedded Systems. And now the link for that is right up there too. It's published by Elsevier. And finally, if you're more of a seminar person than a book person, I present a five-day seminar on doing control systems in embedded systems. And I present that seminar through Besser Associates. And the link for Besser Associates is right here. You can go to their website, find my class on there, and contact them about taking a class. I hope you enjoyed this presentation about how a PID controller works. Thank you.